big ASMR app. Uh, I'll start off by saying that I had a fucking blast doing the bash drafts yesterday. Yeah, overall, it was a great time. It was until ner- it was it was nerve wracking, dude, dude. That was like when I say when I say I had a blast. I mean, I've, like I finally felt something. You know, it was the first time I feel like I've done a fantasy draft in a while where I was like really into it. It was great watching Animal Crumble with every pick. I, you know what it was? It was I had in my head a real like plan on who I wanted. And I was like, you know, eight picks away, and I'm going like. All right, these three guys, I want one of these three. And then, boom, they all go. And I'm just like, all right, these two. And then, like, boom, they go. And it's like, now I don't know who to pick. I'm panicking. And two minutes, you think it's enough time, but it's not. Like, it it wasn't fun. It was just super intense. Yeah. And that's all I'm looking for. Yeah, well, because this is a league that I'm going to take very seriously and I want to do well in. And I don't feel like I'm going to be able to do that now. <laughs> I'm not set up for success. <laughs> yeah, so we had 50 drafts kick off last night. Uh, we're filming this on Monday. The bash drafts were on Sunday. This will probably be out either Tuesday or Wednesday. But we basically wanted to just kind of recap the night as we had 50, um, 50 leaks set off exactly at the same time, 6 p.m. and like 17 seconds in. Six! Six. Blocking the camera. Five. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Two! Five! All right, now 10 more seconds. Did you sleep? Oh, we're good. Oh, we're going. Oh, no, you did mine. Never mind. Josh Allen. Oh. No, they're good. We're good. We're no, we're good. good. Everybody's we're good. good. And things went pretty flawlessly from a from a tech sense for the most part. Um, we saw people posting their leagues on on Twitter, their teams they were drafting. We had about five or six people that were in the bash all drafting in the office. Um, so we want to talk about just some of the things we saw, some of the things we noticed throughout the draft, how we felt about our own personal drafts, any you know trends, anything cool about um, our own personal leagues. And I did a video yesterday, kind of recapping my entire league. So I won't I won't get too much into. Um, into mine, I will say, seeing people like post their teams on Twitter just got me fucking it's outraged. Cool. Love to see it. No, oh, it's cool. No, nah. I thought it was cool, but I know what you're saying because when you see the teams, you go, "Why didn't any of those guys fall to me?" <laughs> you're right. You're right. From <laughs> from a from a higher level sense, it was cool because yeah. this was something that like we put together. That was the goal. It you felt know? like like when people would post their Scott Fishbowl teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we saw everybody, different creators and analysts or whatever, posting their teams uh, for the bash, and it was fun to see. Uh, it was really cool because obviously we've worked on this for a long time, so to see people like excited about it, participating in it, and then seeing the teams that they got, that's where I just started getting pissed off because I'm looking at my league and I'm like, why are these motherfuckers not falling to me? Right, everyone, guys that are going like at the five two in in my draft, they're falling to the seven two over here, and I'm like, there's fucking money at stake here. I've got a hunch people aren't fucking treating this like it's real got a hunch i think um fighting for my life you make fantasy football videos for a living right and then people watch those videos and then they're like oh these are all the people nick likes and then like when they're in the draft with you they take those guys yeah but everyone fair point but every (laughs) but everyone across the fucking leagues though in the bash leagues like why are these guys falling and why are they fuck you whatever <laughs> it's because everyone's out i didn't to have any fun you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no this is bullshit it wasn't it wasn't even guys that i like like i've notoriously it was more so jalen waddle just kept fucking falling in every picture i saw he's not a guy that i've been promoting you know he's not a guy that i like love if anything i've been fading him but then i see like he drops to the six eight six nine six ten i'm like i could build a really nice team if you were to drop to me there yeah. couldn't do it regardless this is just me projecting about how much i don't like my team all summer you spent making fake content, trying to lay, trying to get people off the scented path, and it didn't work. Here's the thing. I'm a practice player. I'm a gym class hero. You know, I'll put all the content out in the world, and then when it comes to draft day, I just fucking, sm- sm- fucking, I can't even think of the word. I sliver away to nothing. I'm like spinach in a pot. You shit the bed. Yeah. Put a little oil inside, and I go from Hercules down to fucking Hercules. <laughs> It was pretty Nuts. crazy to see how big of a difference some leagues were with quarterbacks. Like some leagues, I felt like quarterbacks weren't being drafted at all. <laughs> I think some others, people didn't know the super flex. Yeah. Anyone that I feel like the some people that that we gave an NFT to, you know, like someone that we wanted in the league that was like a creator or whatever, they probably didn't go out of their way to like learn the rules. So they just kind of got in like, oh, we're doing a fantasy draft, and quarterbacks ripped off, and probably none of them went in for them. Anybody want to start with their league? I love what my team is. I lo- love what I got. Yeah, I, I was going to say, um, I, my team just kind of upsets me. So, like, sexual sexual P's team is kind of what I had in my head going into the draft, thinking, like, what I want my team to look like. So uh, I'm jealous, but I would like to talk about it. I mean, for me, Christian McCaffrey fell to nine. I thought that was insanely surprising. I had to take him there. I had the 109, so Eckler on the turn at the 204. And then somehow, Javante Williams made it to the 309. That's mind-blowing to me because he went in the 2, like, 10 in mine. And most, I feel like most drafts, he went either late 2, early 3. 
I snagged him at the 3-2. I had the choice to get him at the 3-4. I won't remember. No! What? Dude, Javante just went right before me. Really? Yeah. He, went, he went in the second? He went at the 2-10. Because Dude, you know I'm, I'm Broncos I'm trying to get I'm trying to get. Wait, Max, you here. like that guy? I went with Devontae over... Devontae Adams over Javante Williams. I went with a good Devontae. I just wanted to make my team a little more well-rounded. I just... I went into it thinking that if... If I, like, diversified the team up top, it wouldn't put me in a situation where I had to force any picks, you know? Because if I went, like, RB, RB off the rip, then when I got to that fourth, fifth, sixth round, if I didn't see value at wide receiver, I didn't want to, like, push it. Um, that makes sense. But also, like, I'm also thinking in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, I never see value of running back there. No, nah, never. It's the dead zone. So, yeah. yeah. I was okay. I was okay fading running back. I kind of went into it knowing that my whoever my RB2 was is going to be really weak, turned out, because of some things that happened last night. <laughs> What are you laughing at? It's like it's, <laughs> it's just an insane event of like you know chain of events. Um, like when it happened, how it happened, what happened, and then you just said Allen Robinson got shot multiple times. Ten point seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, whoa, the, the guy drafted. Robinson. What? Ryan Robinson, after being shot as a victim in an attempted robbery. Yeah, that's what I actually true. Who's Brian? Alex. Alex? Brian Robinson, Robinson actually got shot. Back. Dude, oh, that's right. why. That's why right Gibson just fucking yeah. went. Oh, shit. Wait, 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 wait. What's the news? Dra- grab Dra- Antonio Gibson. I actually, I want to ask everybody this. Yeah, because, okay, so I, my draft, we were at like the 8 3 when we heard the news of Brian Robinson and him being shot. I was up at the 8 9. Gibson was not off the board yet. Neither was Robinson, obviously. So I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to take Gibson here if he falls to me and he fell to me there. First of all, was Gibson already taken by the time? The news broke, and if not, how long did it take for him to fall off the board once the news hit? I think he was in my league. He went off at the seven one. Pretty sure we were. that was definitely prob. That, that was, was I mean prior to the news. It had to have been. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I feel like there was a good amount of uh, Antonio Gibson auto drafts that happened, probably in the fifth, sixth round. So I feel like if he goes outside of the the you know, if he goes in the seven eight nine, you see that that's probably the news breaking people yeah. and like oh shit what a steal like you know snag because the only the only leagues where he would be auto draft is if there was someone missing so there's only ten of those ten leagues like that so I was just curious if there was like the majority of leagues was like oh the news dropped and then within the next like two picks Gibson went off the board it took like seven picks in it my was league. like right at the time where you were in the range of like maybe taking Gibson. Because all, all the leagues kicked off at the exact same time. Yeah. So for the most part, especially in the beginning, they were all within the, in the same like round or so. I, I remember definitely like having Robinson at the top of my queue when that news broke. And yeah, I was just like, I this seems like a serious injury. I would put him at more doubtful than questionable. <laughs> but yeah, I think, Gib- I think Gibson went like, someone had to have like an up-to-date notification on that. Because I, I thought it was... I thought it was weird that Gibson went suspiciously early during a draft in which seemed really sharp. League three is full of sharps. Dude, all right. I'm going to be honest. The entire bash, I think, was just an overall, like, really, really sharp league. Like, the whole thing. I, I don't, I didn't see a lot of pictures where anyone's starting lineup was, like, super stacked. Didn't see any benches that were, like, overly strong where you're like, what, you know, are you playing in a friend's fucking league where yeah, you're a bunch I mean, of morons? All the casuals ended up in League 13 or whatever with Sexy P. That's yeah. not true at all. Yes, it is. Nah. You, you, My you want to show the draft board? Well. Yeah. Show Somebody the draft look board. at this man's draft Throw it up board. there, Ike. It's yeah. fucking terrible. It's crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're, you're, congrats. Your team looks great. You you have a league full of scrubs. If you're in if you're in League 13, yep. you should be ashamed of yourself. No. You should be proud. For what you let Sexual P do to you yeah. on draft night. Sexual P penetrate. My team's just good because... I'm a sharp. Well, yeah, but you got nothing but fucking layups. No. It's easy to be a high percentage shooter when you're under the basket all the time. Like, you, your first round pick is Christian McCaffrey at the nine. You know that. He like, fell to the 10 in some leagues, which is crazy. Right. The casual leagues, he yeah, fell to the, the 10. Casual Yannick, the Yannick had the 109 in his draft, and he got McCaffrey in the first, and then Je- Justin Jefferson in the second. Look, just because there were other more casual leagues doesn't mean that yours also wasn't just like overall, but, the bash is overall, full of sharps. A few that aren't in sexy right. peas. We had some outliers. Right. Unfortunately, we couldn't like disperse the sharps and casual. Evenly, it really seems that like all the sharps uh, gather together like, in some leagues. Two, then, yeah, there's two full leagues of cashes. Yes, <laughs> and they were all in sexies. <laughs> Absolutely, insanity. I'll defend League 13 till I'm dead. <laughs> I do like the rest of my team though. After that, the only position that I think I really struggled with was tight end. I waited on tight end until round 11, and then got Cole Komet. I think it's your with, best pick with Noah no. Fant and Austin Hooper. Just a trio of mediocre guys. First of all. You're going to have such a First shitty all, time trying to know Cole who Komet, every part of that. Did you forget about Cole Komet? Breakout season. It's Cole coming. Komet. Breakout season. This is the year. Also, Austin Hooper as your backup. 
he could be a top ten tight end on his own. No one even is even no one's even talking about it. Yeah. But that's not that big of a statement. Top ten tight end. A bunch of bums end up as the tight end ten. Yeah, he's not going to be top ten, and if he is, it doesn't fucking matter. He's not going to be good enough for it to matter. <laughs> top ten. Top tight end is being like, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm well, the yeah, top student at my home that school. Like, Outside of that, when when they're all gone, you need to draft someone else. You should be looking for guys like Cole Komet and Austin Hooper. Well, you and me both went top tight ends. I got yeah, Mark I, Andrews. I, I, I went with Goddard. Throw me in that category, relax, please. Relax mid over there. Jalen Hurts throws the ball 200 times a year. Mark Andrews at the – where did you get Pitts at? Fifth, 502. 502. I got Andrews at the 4-9, and I'm like – That was a steal. I agree. It's one of those, like, great value picks, but at the end of the year, am I going to be like it was a great fucking value, the, or am I going to be like, fuck a tight end? The biggest again? problem with taking a tight end that early is when you look at it, like, I could have taken either, like, Jalen Waddle or – Kyle Pitts. And now I look at my wide receivers and I go, shit, my wide receivers suck. I really could use Jalen Waddle. And that's where it hurts. That's where it kills my team. Because I could still get a – I could have got TJ Hawkinson like three rounds later and been yeah. fine. The problem you know? is like you always think you're like, oh, I could have this guy and this guy and then j- and just have had TJ Hawkinson three rounds later or fucking Cole Komet six rounds later. We just need someone yeah. to figure out whether or not that ma- that matters. Like is the fall off from Mark Andrews to Dallas Goddard worth – Skipping on a walk. Like, we need someone very, very smart out there to run the numbers. My instincts are telling me it's not smart and that I made the wrong decision. I think the other problem was all your guys ended up getting snipe in the later rounds. Like, I feel like if you, you went with Kyle Pitts, but if you were able to match him with the receivers you liked in those 7th, 8th, ninth rounds, you would have been fine with it. The problem is, is you spent all of draft night screaming about how your players kept getting snipe, yeah. and that was the most ridiculous thing happening. I have like no quarterback to choose from. I have no fucking anything. Derek Carr, Kirk Cousins. Wide receivers. Went, like everybody went in the third round. Wait, oh, who, did, who, did no. you, who did you take? Who did you take? crumbling. Who did you take? I need, I need. Let's go, fall baby. Fall. Oh, there he goes, Jerry Jude. <laughs> Shit. Does Bush like him under St. Brown? Line I don't think so. You fucking liar! What? You just text him or something? No. Oh, he, he just took him. Liar. This is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, Every player I want is going. Yeah, and then I also kept picking players with the same bye week, so half my team, if I even make it to the bash, is fucked. Is everybody's fucking bye week week fourteen? <laughs> oh shit! Everybody on that team. Oh fuck! I don't look at any week. Oh my god! It's your whole team is bye week. Yeah. <laughs> what well, week? Oh, fuck. 14 and 13. Oh, 14 and 13. <laughs> all of Animals team is week 13. Oh, Animals are right on there. Animals yeah. yeah. for sure get into the bash, and then if I sure <laughs> first round exit. <laughs> fuck. DJ Moore, Kamara, Matt Ryan, Kyle Pitts. Jeez. 13 and 14. If you're week 14, you're fucked. Even if you somehow make it through week 13, you're fucked at 14. But maybe Here's the thing. Everybody, everybody's, everybody's got... You screwed yourself. Like yes, so I'm like, aware. I've taken I take responsibility for my actions because I'm a man. But you know, there's six teams on buying week 14. Everybody's got fucking buys left and right. There's no there's no team going in there 100. percent Barely, probably 70. percent Not to mention half of all these players are going to be injured by that point. Anyway. Yeah, this is the healthiest hmm. my team's going to be all year. <laughs> I know that. I know how this works. You know what happened too? I was looking pretty much looking at everybody that you know you'd like consider sharp. Someone who's like a an analyst or whatever, right? I feel like they all took the exact same approach. They all just want wide receivers, and it's crazy. Yeah. I was looking. Yeah, I was looking at like Josh Larkey, Matt Kelly, Davis Maddock in my league. Josh uh, Norris. Josh Norris. Yeah. Pete. Pete they all Dalton, did the same. Dalton. All Mike, they, Dalton, Dalton. me up especially. Mike. Yeah. They, all they they literally just took like a quarterback up top maybe a running back and then six rounds of wide receivers that was actually going to be my strategy going in too but none of the wide receivers i wanted fell to me at all so i was you know i was sitting sitting there yelling at my fucking cousin mike the entire time i don't know how these people look at their rosters with like michael carter and naeem hines as their rb1 and they're chilling with that they're like no this is optimal what part of that is sexy i'm starting i'm starting to want better wide receivers than i am running backs i don't i don't know where the switch in my mind turned like when it happened but i'm, I'm like in but on what that okay you're you're mortgaging you only have running two back running backs position. you only have to start two running backs though so it's yeah. like if you have one strong one all you got to do is figure out one yeah. other yeah. fucking rb2 and running backs get hurt so often well, that you're just hoping that one of those starters goes down and you've got the backup and you have the ability to draft like five wide receiver twos so you know you're getting like 12 to 14 points a game in every spot and all you got to do is hit on like one extra running back but what i don't get is people want to load up their flex spots with more wide receivers right as but you can you can you can get depth. You can get running back depth, even though you only start two. You can start four. The same argument that people are yeah. like, oh, you can start five wide receivers. I don't Here, give a fuck. It's it's almost like okay, so the drop off 
is different positionally. So, like, once you get to – in the same way that people do late-round quarterback, right, because the points per game difference is not right. that varied, that kind of happens with wide receivers. But it happens with running backs once you hit, like, RB2 range. So, it's like a lot of the running backs from RB20 to, like, 35 are not really differentiated. So, if you can get, like, four fucking running backs in the top 20, you might be looking good, but it's really, really hard to get. So, it's almost like if you do miss out on the elite tier of RBs – Just wait. Yeah, just wait. And I mean, I agree, but these- you're, you're missing out on them because you're drafting wide receivers earlier. Like, if you spent your first three out of four or five picks on running backs, you should be able to nail top 20. Depends. It's not what the know. Sharps are like, saying or doing. Like if you get into, those, like, the fourth, fifth round guys, then maybe not. Like, the, you know, it's like the Josh Jacobs or the Elijah Yeah, those Mitchells. guys are kind of gross. It's starting to get into that iffy territory. And even, honestly, I think even top 20 is a little bit too much. I think it's more like top 10 top 12 yeah once you get to like 15 17 i feel like it's it's a little bit ugly whereas wide receivers just like fuck fucking nice yeah. for for a really long strain of uh if you don't have those elite to your guys with that high upside just take a receiver instead i'm, I'm really interested to see how all this plays out with I those st- teams i still don't get that with the wide receivers though i feel like it's the same thing after the top 15 for both positions no you'll see even like if you look at last year why are you still like, on the guys. field like those running backs like half yeah. them they like they make it eight carries that's why i want to like, pepper them early because i want guys who i know for sure yeah Right, but that's not what these experts are doing. They're fucking loading up on wide receivers yeah, the first three stacking rounds. Yeah, wide receivers. I mean, you could start five of them. So if you get six yeah. or seven really good ones, like you have the majority of your starting lineup is filled with just good players. Same for the thing entire with year. my super flex. Like, if you can get like Josh Allen, like in like a Dak Prescott, you get like two top tier like quarterbacks. Like, you're basically getting sixty points every week right away to start. So like, you're ahead of the game on that point. So like, these guys are stacking three elite, you know, wide receivers are basically starting with their 60 points. If you get, you know, 20 each, you know, give or take here or there, but you're getting your 60 points to start every week just from yeah. three guys. But, you know, the quarterback's two guys. That's what I'm saying. If you can utilize those those tiers when you're drafting, get them. it's huge. Receivers also, in general, get injured way less. It's a passing yeah, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even trying to predict injuries, but I I still feel like if you if you solidify, like, your RB1, 2, and even a f- your first flex with another RB... I'm way more confident in the later rounds I can find usable wide receiver twos than running back twos. Like, once we enter the dead zone, you're done. It's not so much once you enter the dead zone, you're done. It's just when you enter the dead zone, you need to take four or five of those guys that one of them becomes live during the season. Like, they're all dead. Someone's going to come to life. You just don't know who it is. It's just so so much easier to hit on wide receivers. Like, from rounds one through seven, you can literally draft, like, one of 40 dudes and be, like, really... Have a really nice yeah. player in your That's lineup. That's what I'm saying. So I would want to spend later round picks on wide receivers because it's easier to hit on. No, them. one through set. I'm not talking about later round picks. I mean, you could like sit there and be like, I know I'm going to hit on Randall Cobb as my wide receiver three, but more often than not, it's probably not going to happen. There's just going to be I mean, that, average that's seven like, or eight points per game. And like, that's not something I'm more. Yeah. Playing. I mean, Randall Cobb is like super deep, though. That's like, yeah. ultra, I think the best that's strategy like right now receivers. is to get your, your the one stud running back and then wide receiver, wide receiver, court, you know, like. If you can get a stud in the first round, that's your main guy. If he fucking makes it all season, stays healthy, sick. You know, that's it. Like, you can just stack your rest of your team. I think that's the best strategy in fantasy right now. Whatever they want to call it. What is it? Robust, uh, I mean, hero RB? Hero RB. Yeah, something like that. I think that's probably the best strategy right now. I, I think the best strategy is to not go in with a strategy. Because I had a strategy going in, and then with the way the board fell, yeah, I took a completely But that's like strategy. a fucking... You're also at nine, though. That's like the saying when you're riding a bike, you should pedal. Obviously, you fucking know that. You have to adjust and play to the board. Like, you know, it's just... That's kind of basic. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows that. The mocks just didn't, didn't play out the same way that... Yeah that the regular drafts would be. And I told you, because quarterbacks were going to go way higher and rip off quicker. People are just tight. They're not letting dudes like Mike Williams and Cortland Sutton dropped around six and seven where you can normally yeah, get those guys. Yeah, I was getting Keenan like five, six, seven. Yeah, like, like my mock drafts were fucking box. elite, you know? And then my regular draft came out nothing, nothing like it. What's like, who's like low-key your most excited, the player that you're most excited about drafting? Like not one of your studs, but like some guy that you got, you know, around like eight or like 14 or some shit. And you're like, I'm, I'm low, I'm like really weirdly excited about it. I look at my team and I think we have all the talent in the world, but I swear to God we got no heart. Yeah, you need, I, I you can need already a better coach. Yeah, I sure. can already tell this team's gonna let me down so hard. I'm not r- actually excited really about anyone. I think like <laughs> best <laughs> <That's good. laughs> like I think best value wise, it's probably Kamara at the back of the second just because he can finish as like a top five RB and the There's only no thing, one else that you're excited about that's not like a top two round pick. That's what I'm saying. It's like I. I don't know. I went with Waddle in the fourth. I'm really not feeling that. Mike Williams, I should be more excited about, especially because I stacked him with Herbert. Yeah, but I, fuck, I don't know why. Mike Trade Williams, I feel like he's going to let me down. I don't think so. 
I would die for a fucking Herbert Williams stack. You see Waz's team? You got fucking Herbert, Keenan, and Mike Williams. I thought about yeah. doing that. It almost fell to me where I could have. Yeah. I was like one pick away or something. Up. I'll tell you who I'm... Well, I like Darrell Henderson. I really like that yes. I got him in the 11th. Dude, Same. I was so upset when I missed out on Same. him. Yeah, I think he's going to be a huge um, proponent of me not grabbing running backs, which is sexy, but I'm so excited about Julio Jones, bro. <laughs> really? <laughs> Julio's going to be a fucking... Julio, bike! ...player this year. I don't... Man. I think, like, for three games, maybe. Yeah. Big three fucking games yeah. for me. He's on the field. Yeah, I really like him. I think he... I think... I, dude, Brady's... going to have an A.J. Green type, like, year, like he had, like, the other... You know what I mean? Brady's going to make him make him a player. I could see it. He I'm worried about Brady, Brady, dude. Guy looks like a... I'm worried about every everyone in Tampa Bay. <laughs> this is the year. Julio. This is the year, Brady. For sure. Brady. Hey, where you heard it here on this podcast <laughs> first, Brady falls no off. No one else has He's ever said it. fallen off a cliff. Yes. Tom Brady's just about done. It could be... His next game he plays, it could be a year from now, but he is going to fall off a cliff. No, I just think Julio's going to get out there and Brady's just going to make him not Julio, but Julio for all intents and purposes. So I was kind of excited about that. Um, The rest of my team, not excited about it at all. I've got two guys that I'm like kind of excited about. One of them is a short-term excitement just because of, you know, who he is and I don't know how long he's actually going to be playing as a starter, but Mike Davis. I knew you were going Mike Davis, I got him in the 18th round. I got him there too. Like he's, he's going to be taking the starting or at least splitting the starting uh, running back role, getting carries in the Ravens offense that runs the ball a ton. And Mike Davis is, you know, he's he's a good running back. He's not, you no, know, he's not. He's not, he's not uh, a superstar or anything. But he, in, in a good offense and a good system, he can get get some good yards, get some he, good touchdowns. He'll get for you it. like eleven to twelve points for like three weeks, which is nice for a flex. I have him too. So hard to be excited because I also have Bateman and Andrews. Well, yeah, that's your I have own the problem. entire you got Baltimore your own problems over there, dog. <laughs> without Lamar Jackson, <laughs> like, I wish you got the could. only. It's the only guy you should have is Lamar, and then you got everyone else. No, Mike Davis is the only guy I should have. <laughs> yeah, so that kind of makes me depressed. But uh, yeah, so I'm in mean, short term excitement with Mark D- uh, Mike Davis, and then this isn't so much excitement; it's more of a. Like a nervousness. Uh, Christian Kirk. I have him. He's my wide receiver, too. I don't really like him, but there's just something inside of me that feels like he's going to be a league winner this year. I think he'll be really good. Because a lot of people are just kind of like, eh, it's Christian. It's not sexy. It's the Jaguars. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, you know, hopefully he gets that breakout year or just a better year than last year. But I think Christian Kirk is going to be one of those guys where you're drafting him so late that he could end up being a league winner for you and, you know, being a, a really solid wide receiver two, possibly a wide receiver one, which I don't think he will be. I but think that I think the Jags are going to surprise a lot of people this year. I think they're actually going to be a pretty well-rounded team. This doesn't really have to do with fantasy, but real quick, Doug Peterson, when he took over the Eagles 2017, mm-hmm. made a bunch of uh, acquisitions, kind of similar to this, where he like paid Alshon Jeffrey. Everybody thought that was an overpay. Got a bunch of defensive players like Chris Long. Got Garrett Blunt. Everybody thought he was done. They made a run for it. They made a run for it uh, coming off a terrible year. So it, you know, on paper, it kind of resembles the Eagles. So I'm starting to. uh, I like what they're doing there. Yeah. You're not going to. I don't think you're going to regret taking Christian Kirk. No, No, it just sucks that he's your wide receiver, too. Yeah. I just don't like look at it and go, like, hell yeah, Christian Kirk, baby. He might, he'll probably finish as like the wide receiver 23 or some shit because his volume is going to be super high in that Mm -hmm. offense. I think if he can get me my 12 points every week, you know, I'll be happy. Look, he's the number one wide receiver for a generational talent at quarterback. Like, I think people, I think Urban Meyer can't. Dude, Chill. this is what I'm talking Chill about, dude. Urban Meyer, Urban Meyer put a stink on Trevor Lawrence where people forget what his ceiling was I'll tell you coming what, out of college. Stank. I think history put a stink on Trevor Lawrence. It's the fact that, like, half the time you get these number one overall guy, they always come out and they just bust. Yeah. Which is, like, this is the thing. You, Too he's, the, a bust. He's, he's the best. Nah. Like, I can't wait to see, like, I do a huge Manning guy, right? I think, what's his name? Yeah, Archie, uh, fuck, what's his yeah. what's Arch, the Arch, Texas. Arch, Arch, Arch Manning. Yeah. It's gonna suck. Everyone's he's gonna come out. Everyone's gonna be, it's the best thing ever. Well, he's t- different. He's gonna have a bunch of hype just because of his name. Yeah, but Trevor Lawrence. I mean, obviously he built his name himself, but throughout college, the guy never lost a game. All this stuff, people talking about it, and like that shit doesn't mean it doesn't mean crap when you get to the NFL. It's such a different ball game. I don't care if you're the best from fucking five years old to twenty two, and then you get to the NFL. You're nobody. I don't care. Trevor's going to ball this year. He is. I feel like people gave nobody. him, people are giving him a pass for his first year. Like, he's like, all right, he's probably not a bust because, you know, that's probably all on Urban. But I think they he also took the, like, Urban took the ceiling away from Trevor. And we're, we're forgetting how good of a guy and how good of a player Trevor good Lawrence is. <laughs> Firstly, <laughs> for, yeah. guy he is. I, I said guy, I meant player. Fuck, I don't know. He, he no, I, I'm not like, I didn't give up on him. I don't think he's a bust. I'm just saying, I think he'll just be like an average, average quarterback in the league. I think you're going to regret saying that. Yeah. I hope so. Anyone besides Why me have him on the team? I like him. I want, I want him to see him do well. I just personally don't. I don't know. We'll see. Confidence issue. 
Besides me? I didn't. I was no, I don't have him. I was hoping he he would be my QB too. He went off pretty early. I was looking at some of the um the minimum and maximum picks today while I was going through the videos and some of the quarterbacks that went off the board and like how early they went. Did Kelly's Daniel Jones went in like the fifth round in one league? So Derek That's Carr's insane. earliest pick was twenty three, which was Kelly. Was that Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. That's so um, funny. <laughs> yeah. Trevor Lawrence's earliest pick was thirty eight, which is the four oh two. Jeez. Uh, I got him at the eight four. Daniel Jones, this is the craziest part. Like Daniel Jones went off the board fifty fourth in a league, which yeah. is the five oh six. And then he went off the board at one fifty eight in another league. Jeez. That's probably sexy's league, I would <laughs> guess. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. he went eleven ten in my league. Yeah. So that's insane. That's, that's like that could be it. <laughs> that's the one eight one hundred and eighteenth pick. How the fuck did you know that? No, that's not yeah. true. It's way past. Oh, that. no, you're right. It's, it's like 135 or some wow. shit. Wow. Math fraud. Fuck. Never listened to you. <laughs> I asked you the other day. It was a big trade. What if... <laughs> 142. I was rethinking everything. Yeah, it hurts listening to this. Uh, give me a player, and I'll tell you their best and worst pick. Oh, the biggest one was Justin Fields. Yeah, we didn't talk. I think Justin Fields' <laughs> earliest was 21, yeah. right? 21, Ridiculous. and then he dropped all the way to 100 in a different That league. is just the most absurd pick of all time. Did someone like just watch that preseason game and go like, holy shit, I got to fucking take Justin Fields? 100%. Like, how yeah, do you not... a game, but like shit. How do you not at least wait until the 304? Like, you, you're 2-9, and you're like, I need Justin Fields on my team. At least wait till the 304 to secure him. I mean, the 604 would have seemed super early, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, there's no point, justification. Like, if you're taking him at the 209, what the fuck is <laughs> yeah. the 304? Yeah. Well, like, just use you your know, first round pick on You know yeah. he's not going off in the next six picks. I mean, you know he's not going off thought, in the next six rounds. that fucking guy went and <laughs> took him. Jamar Chase went off the board fifth overall in a draft and then 26th overall yeah, in a draft. Crazy. What about, okay, I want to throw out a player. Matt Ryan, Matty Ice. How are we feeling about him? I'm fucking loving Matt Ryan this year. Every single day. I, I'm starting to think he's winning an ever, another MVP. I think they're just gonna have like this is Dude, a common put money take, on. I put money on them going to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. Yeah. they're they easily winning the division. That's not even Phillip like Rivers a, that's an year. easy. That's like basically no, what I dude, expect. No, dude, think about this. Philip Rivers was way more shot of a quarterback coming into a new team during COVID. He didn't even have an off season. I with think this Matt team. Ryan's kind of shot, but he's, not he's, nearly. He's, as he's much a little bit shot, was. but he's not. He's going to be good. He's going to be good. He's less shot than Philip Rivers and Brian. I Robinson. think Philip Rivers was too much of a football guy to, for you to like doubt. Like he doesn't need to be with it. He's just going to come in, fucking sling it. And, no, and sir, dude, that's, that's it. What no. do you mean? No, you just no off season together with a new team. Yeah, he's just it. supposed to build chemistry, <laughs> but he's from, a football like, guy. Telekinesis. He's a football guy. That's yeah. it. Just come in, start throwing it, saying "God dang." Matt Ryan was Gosh darn. the QB two in every one of my mock drafts I did, and then he went off at five five, and I was like, "Fuck, I can't." You know, there, I just I wasn't grabbing him before that. I'm going to take him at the fucking five four. Also, Colts coach Frank Reich been saying that this is the fastest pace offense he's ever seen since you know his tenure in Indianapolis. I think that's going to be big. I think they're going to be throwing the ball a lot more than people expect. I think I took Naeem Hines for that reason. I, I feel like yeah. Hines this year. I feel like for Naeem Hines, we're going to see a little bit of like the Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, the Austin Eckler, bigger back kind of thing going on with him. I, I mean, they obviously have the good old line and have the ability to run the ball. They can also play defense. So that was like, that's a style of football that they could play last year. But I don't think that's what they prefer to do. If they can sling it with Matt Ryan, I think they're going to. That's why I love Alec Pierce. I was going to say, there's got to be a wide receiver, too, that steps it's, up and becomes, like, Pierce. a super good value. It, maybe it is Pierce. It feels kind of weird saying Paris Campbell because we've been saying that for years it's now. Campbell. No. It, you think it's Campbell? It's, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed not. I took Campbell late in, in this draft, so if I could stack him with Matt Ryan, I'd be hyped. I don't know. All the reports out of camp, Pierce is looking like the guy. He's playing in two wide receiver sets. He's one of my favorite late round picks. In check last week's preseason game. All Campbell, baby. Paris Campbell, baby, and it yeah, will be. They for, rested Alec Pierce. It will be for about three quarters. It always was <laughs> until he fucking until hurts dead. something because he's a puss. I hate Paris Campbell. I've been I've been a fan of his for two years, and he's maybe even three. I don't know how long he's shit, been in the animals for. off him now. And he has done nothing. I've never been on him. But I am. shit, Hang. he's been shit every year. Shit, because he just gets injured within two seconds of stepping on yeah, the field. Yeah, best availability, best. Best ability. Best ability is availability. You know what? You know what? Uh, you know what kind of fucked me up when I posted my team last night, and I didn't really notice it, but Brett Coleman commented on it. And you guys see that? No. no. What are you talking about? Real quick. I saw a lot of people commenting pretty negatively about your draft. Yeah, a lot, I mean, of, a lot I of people set up. Nick like, was the one who started it. I set up five. I, I tweeted five times like my team is so <laughs> bad. I'm not posting it over and over again. And then I finally posted it. It's just, you know, no one came to your side. No one came to your rescue. Everyone was I'm like, not yeah, out no, here looking right. for fucking... Yeah, that's, let's, let's be real. That's, me. Yeah, that's, why, that's why you posted it. 
I posted That's, it for them to make fun of me. Let's find out what your true intentions were. Yeah. So I posted my team, and he commented, uh, I want the kind of confidence it takes to rest the fate of my fantasy season on Washington, Chicago, and the New England offense. <laughs> When he said that, I was like, yo, this is going to be a replay of last year all over again when I just didn't take good players on good teams. Yeah, dude. Honestly, it's it's crazy that Josh Norris comes into the sleeper bowl, gives you the fucking winning strategy, and you just ignore it. Good I players Sa- on Saquon, good teams. Never going to learn. Washington, I have Terry and Gibson. Chicago, I, who do I even have in Chicago? Eh, Darnell Mooney's my RC or three. New England, Mac Jones. Yeah, I got a lot of really bad <laughs> players on bad teams and bad offenses she, she, in my she, bad lineup. Nick. I actually kind of like Mac Jones. He's another guy growing on me. I'm Mac gonna, Jones is a guy that like I super I, – I was really high on going into the season. Just every week I got lower and lower. And I don't know if there's the a real reason there. why, but I just feel like – The reports out of New England are – Horrific. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that is the reason why I guess <laughs> like the fact that the reports haven't been good. But like normally I don't care about reports or anything like that because especially on a team like the Patriots with Bill Belichick, obviously you just you know I trust in Bill. Figure they'll figure it out. You trust but in Matt Patricia. No Josh McDaniels this year, and that's the big difference. Like he ran the offense, so I guess I am a little. I'm You're a little, a little down. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't a little down on Mac my Jones. QB too. Yeah, well I was saying I would have loved that like three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. Now, if you're an idiot, you're totally, you're totally fucked. I think they could be trying to throw the ball more, which, you know, maybe it's not more efficient, but at least the volume increase. Well, I got Kendrick Bourne, so. Well, oh, that not, doesn't really mean anything. You mean someone who's on the field. <laughs> yeah. I think we, who ended up with Alan Lazard? I feel like, do you? Okay, three of us. <laughs> yes, three out of all got. Did you get no. one? No. Okay, three of us ended up with Alan Lazard. I really want to talk about him because I feel like he's a polarizing player where some people are like, he's stepping in that Devontae Adams role. He's going to get peppered with targets. He's got that chemistry. And other people are like, dude, he hasn't done anything yet. So what the fuck should we care? I got him. Yeah, he's my wide receiver five. I got him in the 10th round. So I felt like, uh, you know what it is? He's one of those players where when you start, when you're doing what we're doing and you're like kind of in tune with fantasy stuff from the jump, like if you were doing like an underdog draft or you're doing just mocks on sleeper, I remember Alan Lazard being like a six round pick and there hasn't really been any change to his status. People have just been like, eh, maybe we shouldn't like <laughs> Alan Lazard yeah. that much. And he's kind of just dropped down to the point where it's like, when you start seeing him that late, you're like, I should just take him because he used to be this fucking price and now he's this price. So yeah. it's like, I'm not excited about him, but I think it's important in fantasy to like acknowledge range of outcomes here. Like, you could not like a player, and he could still be forced into volume. You could like a player and X, Y, Z. A million things could happen. I think Lazard's range of outcomes is very wide. So it's like he has upside, which a lot of players that you yeah, draft in the 10th, 11th round just simply don't have. It's a low-risk, high-reward type scenario because you're not spending a, a high pick on him, and he could end up giving you value of a 6-7, you know. Yeah, he's one of the few pick. players. It's like you can look at Lazard, and you can look at, like, Tyler Boyd. Right, Tyler Boyd doesn't have upside outside of an injury to Higgins or Chase. Yes, Alan Lazard could finish as a top 15, 12 wide receiver by just being good. You know, like he doesn't yeah. actually have to wait for a Sammy Watkins injury or whatever. And I think when you factor that in, like that's when you take a guy like that over Tyler Boyd, depending on how you. He's still playing up. with Aaron Rodgers, who yeah, I think he's probably this could be his last year. I think he's probably fucking passes, he loves his, passes, too. passes prime yeah. at this point. But uh, I don't yeah, know. He's got Aaron Rodgers. I think he's had plenty of opportunity. To take that role and he just hasn't done it. But like, even when Adams take was it there, from Devonte Adams, no, to be the wide receiver two, and he just didn't do anything. But he's no wide I receiver. feel like he definitely was the two. You gotta realize there's year. never a wide receiver two in there used in to be Green Bay. Yeah, but you're comparing Jordy Nelson and the Randall Cobb years or whatever, right? Yeah. Congrats, that was like three years. Randall well, Cobb still there, three dude. years. Yeah, but you know wasn't the floor. And then at, what about before that? One? It's a totally different system. That was when it was Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers literally threw back shoulder fades every play. This one's going to the right side of the field. That one's going to the left side of the field. Lazard has shown, he's shown glimpses of, like, when Adams has been out, he's put up big games. He's never had consistency. How many? Yeah. Let me ask you, how many touchdowns do you think he caught last year? Last eight. year? Lazard? Who you say? Eight. Who are you talking about, Lazard? We're Lazard. talking about Lazard. I'll take the Three. under of eight, but I'll say, like, I'll say six. He had eight. He had eight. Damn. He had eight in 15 games. Photographic memory. Anyway. That's the thing, though. <laughs> like, if Adams is gone and Rodgers throws 33 touchdowns or some shit this year, Lazard could catch 10 of them just fucking because he's there. Yeah. yeah. The, the, my biggest thing with Lazard is for, obviously not fantasy, but for just like a gambling, like his wide receiver, his rece- his receiving yards was like 750. That's way too low. And I think he had 500 something yards last year and he barely played. So it's just like, if he can just play a full season, like as a main target, 
He's going to crush all his numbers. He's going to crush his ADP. He's going to crush everything. Yeah. I, I, you could see it getting, like, end of season. We know what it is on paper right now. It's Lazard, a minimum it's 900 Watkins, yards. It's, Rand, it's Randall Cobb. I think that's a lofty projection. Dubs. 900. What? Dubs. That's what I'm saying. By end of season, we'll have, Dobbs will play a role. Christian Watson, I'm sure, will play a role. And then shit's just going to get kind of messy there. There's no shot that we look back in 18 weeks and we're like, yep, it's still Lazard, Watkins, or Randall Cobb. Like, there's no way no. that that's how this season plays itself out. And that's where the downside of Lazard plays in like he could be the one he could fall out too. exactly he could be nothing like his his floor could be absolutely atrocious but i also feel yards. like the i feel like the packers have seen lazard enough to where if they didn't feel confident him being you know they would like draft a second round rookie wide receiver i feel like rogers would have been like yo no fucking chance also. yeah like, exactly like no yeah i think it's kind of clear at this point that they don't really give a fuck what rogers well, that's cares true about too. a wide receiver that's true too he wanted Traylon burks they ended up waiting and taking christian yeah. watson uh clearly not working out for them right now but we'll see. I don't know. This is going to be a very interesting case study because it's like Rodgers runs the team, obviously, but the only strength they have is their two running backs. Like, do they just completely drop out of the passing game? I don't know. I, I, I don't think the smart money would be on the receivers, though. I think I just like the value of taking Dubs in the 13th versus Lazard in the 9th. Feels like such a better pick. It's the same pick to me at that point. Really? If it's a dime, like, like same value, it, you're saying? Yeah, redraft, it doesn't matter. Like, you're I would, taking. Uh, yeah, I like Lazard at where I got him in the 10th over that. Just because we know Lazard's starting immediately. Like, he has the chance. Like, to Dub still has to work his way in. He has to dub. You know, he's got to get some dubs. I think it's Justin Dob- Jefferson had to do that, too. I think it's Dobbs, by yeah, the way. Yeah, but it's he's saying dubs. Yeah, you dubs? both sound like I mean, idiots. That's no, no, I knew Justin it was Dobbs, Je- but dubs just sounds cool. Trump. Like, dubs. Uh, You've only said it once. Romeo dubs. Yeah. Doobies. Yeah. Doobies. Doobies good, too, because you know, I like doobies. But, yeah. Dubs, <laughs> doobs, dobs, whatever you want to call him, he doesn't care. <laughs> he cares a lot, actually. <laughs> he doesn't care at all. Obviously, it's very early, but any dark horses to win it all, if just from some teams you saw. Any teams you saw, you're like, damn, that team's going to fucking win. Dude, Waz's team, Waz's team is really good. That team that you sent on um, Discord, from that, the Discord? That one made me mad. <laughs> that was a team that I looked, and I was like, fuck, I don't, I'm, I'm very mad when I, when I look at that. Yeah, because there's a few teams where... Like, Stafford randomly fell to, like, the fourth or fifth fucking round. It's really the leagues where random quarterbacks that are really good just yeah. fell for no reason. Where so they were able to fade quarterback and still get the fucking exactly. guy two rounds later. Yeah, so if you got, like, two lucky value falls to you, like, your team is absolutely stacked. Because it's just, like, I don't know. You're everything was so tight four picks there. on skill players, and then you can still get an elite quarterback in the four, you know, five, six. That's fucking insane. Yeah. It's like you're playing a single QB league. It kind of felt like I was looking at a lot of teams, and it felt like a lot of teams were just the same. Like, it was tough to keep yeah. looking at them and be like, oh, good team, good team. It's just like, it's just, everyone's drafted the same fucking team. It's all this team like. already. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to see who makes the bash. I feel like it's going to be a lot of the similar draft position. Like, I think the people who go to the bash, we're going to see a lot of them, like, have drafted like pick, from the three spot pick or two, something. Pick two. You know, yeah, whoever drafts the league winner. What's that? Whoever drafts the league winner. Like, it would have been whoever spot... Jonathan Taylor was going in most last year, and like the guys who drafted Cooper Cup in the fourth round. Yeah, so I posted on the Twitter today. I don't know if you saw that, but there was only four four players that went at the one hundred and one. Yeah, I saw that. Allen Herbert, Taylor, C Mac. No J Jeffs, which is kind of surprising. That's surprising. Yeah, I mean, but the, I mean, I guess with like Cooper Cup, guys who were going to turn in league winners who go in the fourth round, it's like everyone for the most part has a shot. Yeah, that that's guy. not like ADP related. Yeah, yeah. Or draft spot but, I, related, I, but I do feel like it's. But it's you never know, like, like the guy in the 102 spot, like you know, out because of the I, 100 people making it, 40 of them. But, the but it's like right, like know? if Alexander Madison gets traded, Dalvin Cook somehow manages, it averages like 28 points per game or something this year. Someone like the 109 to 112 range probably wins their fucking league because right. that's where he went. And I, I think people who draft in the same spot oftentimes have. Similar roster construction. Mm-hmm. Well, teams fall. I mean, the team like yeah. the, that's what I'm saying. So I, I think it's going to be interesting the that the ADP. people who go to the bash are going to average be, draft position. Right. Know. I know what ADP stands for. Well, that's I'm what I'm saying. So it's not like that crazy. Where you know, what's it stand for? Average draft position. Okay. Never, hold on, right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, if you didn't know that at home, Ike put it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I really like uh, Josh Larkey's team too. He started off with Lamar and Jalen Hurts. Which I love that quarterback combo. I think both of them could be. QB one easily, uh, and then he took Fournette, and then basically just went off with a bunch of receivers. I don't, receivers. I don't hate the strategy of going double QB, but I just if if you could if you could I, this sounds dumb, but if you could promise me that like there were some guys like Winston Lawrence Matt Ryan who were gonna be there slightly later than they normally go, I would easily opt for that. So I feel like I'm I, I feel like I'm kind of limiting my upside by going two quarterbacks, even though those two quarterbacks have like huge upside. It's like I I would much rather have the discounted. 
He's got a good team. Whatever yeah. quarterback yeah. that falls. He's one of the few teams I've seen with some some bench depth, too. So he's got a really nice starting, I'd say the worst. I mean, Njoku's definitely the worst starter. But besides that, it's like Melvin Gordon, Devontae Smith, who are guys you can count on to get like 8 to 10 points a game. And on the bench, he's got D-Hop, Canaris Tony, Russell Gage, like Mitch. It, it's a pr- it's just a very well-rounded team that um, one of the few teams with depth as well. So this is, yeah, it's a pretty good team. Um, I think uh, Mike Kelly had a good team, too. So he started C-Mac. Stefan Diggs, and then he was able to get Trey Lance, Derek Carr as his QB one two, and then he was able to get DJ Moore at five five, Jalen Waddle at six eight, Darnell Mooney seven five, Brandon Ayuk eight eight, Goddard at ten eight. Damn, dude, that makes me so mad Wait, that he got yeah. Jalen Waddle, 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 Waddle at the six six eight. I just spent this is what I'm talking about, dude. Round on, oh. yeah. Like, look at that fucking team. This like, he faded a, running backs, was still able to have C-Mac. I had to well. take DJ Moore in the fourth, and Jalen was there in the fifth. Dude, like, and he, see, he gets like, to start around fucking later. He gets to start all five of these wide receivers. Like, all five of them. Like, his starting lineup is going to be incredible. If he has one bullshit RB that he drafted in, uh, yeah, let's see. crazy. When he drafted yeah. Brian Robinson. But he's got Tony Pollard, Brian Robinson, Isaiah Pacheco, Tyler Argyle, Zam, Zamir White, Mike yeah. Davis, Boston Scott, Tyler Betty. If one of those no, guys is like a usable top 25, top 20 running back. Set. He doesn't have to change a thing in his lineup for the entire fucking year. He's also very high on Isaiah Pacheco. I remember talking to him about... Uh, well, about he drafted him in the Super Bowl. Bowl in like the eighth round. Yeah. Another guy, literally. Now he's in the 13th. He, I think I, Pacheco I, went the 18-1, I had the 18-2. I grabbed him in 18-1? the 11th. Yeah. No. Sure. Wait, what? In my league. Uh, 16 or 17-1. Let me look. Are you sh- Dude, I had to grab him at the 11. He went in like the 11th or 12th in mine, I think, too. Maybe he went later. Um, That's in a league I, with Scott and Mike, too. Clearly, they fucked up somewhere. Yeah. Well, Scott probably drafts like f- five running backs, five quarterbacks. Good job, Scott. Pacheco at the earliest went 119, which is about round the end of round 10. And the latest, 178, which is around, around draft. Like That's pretty late. 14 ish. Yeah. That's probably where, that's probably my league. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Matt Kelly was talking about how he thinks it's just like the Pacheco show back there and that he's going to completely take over Clyde's job. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there's, like, a lot of people with concerns about him as, like, an actual runner. I agree. He's got upside because he's, like, a really explosive athlete. He can catch passes, and, like, clearly he's got a role there. It remains to be seen if he's actually, like, a good running back, though, you know? Yeah. I think that's kind of, like, the same role as, like, Jarek McKinnon, is too. It's, like, is he a good runner? Like, probably not at this point. We probably would have seen that play itself out. But he's a good athletic playmaker that can catch passes and shit. So I don't know how that's going to work itself out. But I think they're all worth drafting. Clyde just happens to be the most expensive, so it's, like, why – draft him at that price did you guys also hear that Clyde maybe I just totally missed this but Clyde got gallbladder surgery in the offseason like three months late on that yeah okay I swear I just and that's why he was playing at like 150 pounds last year or some shit yeah Yeah. people who like love Clyde this year kept running with that (laughs) I'm like fam he wasn't out on the NFL field at 150 pounds like he would have died he's doing all this on a cut yeah just wait till he gets his bulking season yeah that backfield just feels like such a committee I don't think uh, anyone's going to emerge. Yeah, what is this? I almost feel like somebody will. The football, oh, they probably put up a sign. Uh, Mike Wright from the footballer said, if we got any Foot Clan people in NYC who happen to be around 7th and 34th Street, see anything unusual, let me know. What the fuck does that mean? That's Madison Square Garden. They probably got a sign up there. Yeah. Footballers probably got like a big advertising thing. Should we go tear it down? Ike, while you're editing this, go there and get Go over there and take a picture. (laughs) (laughs) Zach Moss primed to be dealt. Got a lot of running backs. Possibly. Dude, that'd be huge because I was in a position where I had to take James Cook hated myself for it, but I like I had quite Big literally no other option. Cook, yeah. I, I got Singletary in the tenth. I kind of like him. I think he's going to get a decent. You're going to love carries. him if Zach Moss is gone. Yeah, James it, Cook might get some passing down work, but Singletary is going to be the goal line guy. Yeah, I mean Josh yeah. Allen is going to be the yeah. goal line yeah, guy. True. James Cook is going to be phenomenal on the weeks I leave him on the bench, I mean, and then if I ever dare put him in my starting lineup, he is bound to get a dud, an absolute zero. Yeah, That's how it works. You ever play fantasy football before? I. This is how I know that. And I have this menace on my fucking team. I invited this fucking disease into my team's locker room. What are you talking about? I'm talking about James Cook. <laughs> it's going to be great, probably. No. It's going to be won't. fine. He's on a very good team and a, a high productive, uh, high production offense. I feel like he's going to catch three passes a game, and I have to hope that he breaks one off for a 50 yard touchdown. Well, he's not a starter. Like, I wouldn't be starting him in my lineup. It was like, you know, towards the end of the year, you could see him you know, helping you out. I could yeah. see him having like a, a Heinz role. But like, with none of the excitement. Yeah. All right. That's good to know. <laughs> Reason to be excited. Yeah. All right. Is it time to talk about Jeff Wilson? No, it's not at all. <laughs> I mean, if if you want us to end right now, then yeah, it is time to talk about Jeff talk Wilson. About Sherman. Give it two weeks. Jeff Wilson starting running back for the 49ers. You think he's better than Elijah Mitchell? Uh, At the very least, I think Shanahan likes him more than Mitchell. 
So why would he start Elijah Mitchell over Jeff Wilson if he likes him more? The fact that Jeff Wilson's <laughs> still around, I think Shanahan loves the dude. He's just like a solid backup, so solid yeah. depth piece. Backup. Yeah. He's a backup for now. I think the dude's going to take the job. Why would he take the job now? I think you're just saying that for no reason. No, like, dude, I don't think I, there's any logic behind dude, that. Dude, Jeff Wilson should be, like, cut by now, but he's not because he, Shanahan fucking loves this no, guy. Shanahan you think he's, like, sees, the Rashad Penny of Kyle, of Kyle Shanahan? No. Yes. Shanahan sees his value as just a good backup that yeah. understands his system. He can plug him in any week he needs to, and that's his value. He's been with that's the it. Niners for if four years If he was going to be the starter, he would have been Bryson, the fucking starter, dude. Has he ever had, like, real good games outside yes. of scoring a bunch of touchdowns? No. Well, I mean, he's never had more than 600 yards in a season. Yeah. Uh, okay. He's had some big games, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but look up any 49ers running back that played a game. Like, they're all going to have good games in that system. It's the same thing with the Broncos in the 90s. You know why? Because of the fucking coaches. Oh, wait, who? All Mike right. Shanahan? Here, here, here's uh, my analogy for Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson is, if, if Kyle Shanahan is the girl in this situation, Jeff Wilson's like the best friend who, right, sticks around. And even though the girl gets boyfriend after boyfriend, they always come and go. Jeff Wilson's sitting there on the sideline waiting for his turn, right? Eventually, the girl, Shanahan's going to realize that, you know what? My best friend, Jeff Wilson, was the right one for me. I should have been going with him, but I wasn't. No. My mistake. It's Jeff Wilson's season. No, that's like settling. That's settling. Elijah Mitchell's like the fucking 5'3 Latina, curvy as shit. Let her break my heart until he breaks his leg. That's what Shanahan's doing. So, yeah. So if you want a Mitchell injury, then it's Trey Sermon season. No, dude. And just Trey Sermon. They gets already hurt. announced Jeff Wilson's the number two. If anything, you just described being friend zoned. You're saying that Jeff yeah. Wilson right, is friend zoned by right, Kyle Shanahan. Getting out that means friend zone. he's never getting out, dog. You don't get out <laughs> of the friend is, zone. That's the whole point. Shanahan <laughs> is maturing and realizing that the friend zone. He that's a fake update. Who the fuck's saying <laughs> that? The fantasy source. That sounds real. Bro, you don't get out of the friend zone. So what happens is Jeff Wilson's going to watch Elijah Mitchell go down. But shit, they broke up. It's my turn. And then, Look, boom, here I found, comes Trey I found Sermon. A report too. That's what's going to happen, dog. What's that report say? says. And from when was it? It's from four days ago. This one's from fucking four hours ago. Nah, that's fake. What's that one? This one's real. The opposite of fake. I think best case scenario, if Elijah Mitchell gets hurt, then Jeff Wilson's in a committee. Look, the fact that we're talking about Jeff Wilson has to <laughs> We're smoke. talking about him because there's you smoke. wanted to. It's because we're talking about the whole episode, like, is it time to talk about Jeff Wilson yet? <laughs> Where there's smoke, there's fire. We can't deny that. Yeah, we're talking. We're Trey sitting Sermon here talking about, about that fucking Jeff smoke Wilson. right now. Trey Sermon smoke season. I'm picking Jeff fucking Trey Sermon right now. Jeff Wilson Damn. looked like the best yeah, running back. Drafted. Brutal. You got drafted at the fucking 9 1. It's do? pretty hot. What are you going to do? All right, are we done? Yeah, I mean, I think we were done when Jeff Wilson's name was brought up. I could talk about other shitty running backs I got on my bench. I don't think we Tyler have to do Algier. That. All right, uh, thanks <laughs> for watching, everybody. Skirt. Um, I don't have any. I don't have an outro. I don't know what we normally end this with. Let's actually do something. We could do. We could do the haka where we like. Is that what it's called? We yeah, it's, I know ready. what it's called, but like I, I was asking if that's yeah, what it's called. Like, why would we do that? I'm not going to do the hot guy. We ready. Good. Oh, y'all. Animals, <laughs> team, stinks. Everyone sniped oh, him. I remember now. I Shut a your mouth <laughs> and hit the thumbs up. Stop it.